shader variants. That's what we're gonna talk today. You might be familiar with this window over there and the long waiting hours in the first build time. We're gonna see what is a shader variant and how we can optimize it to take less time in the build and why do we need shader variants at all? Let's begin. A shader variant is a piece of shader that is specifically stripped and compiled by Unity's compiler to optimize the shader binary size in your build. For example, you're getting a build for Android and you're going to produce an APK file and you have specific features for that graphics device. It will create and compile just for those features and will discard the rest of it. For example, in the standard shader, there are 6 million shader variants when you look at the LWRP lit shader. But when you try to get a build for Android with Vulkan plus OpenGL, it only has 5,000. Even that is too much, too much. But um, considering the fact that it reduces from 6 million to 5,000, it is, you know, understandable but it's not enough. To be able to reduce this more, we need to do some optimizations. But before we need to understand why shader variants are necessary. As I said before, they are used to be able to strip the unused parts and create different combinations of dif different specifications, such as you have a directional light in your scene and you have fog enabled, but you don't have a point light. In the standard shader, you're gonna see if you take a look at the code, there are different sections belong to those different abilities. If you don't need a point light, this part of the shader will be discarded, stripped off and not be used. This way, the shader compiler creates the most necessary files, most necessary variants for you and discard the rest of it. But in the first time, first time that you built your project, you will create a shader cache folder inside the library and it has to create all the possible variants regardless of its used or unused to be able to cache it in case you need it later on. Um, but after that, it will only compile the necessary shader variants if they're changed or you know if you use them in different cases such as in the first time you compile it, you only have directional light, but in the next time you have fog enabled fog enabled part needs to be compiled again uh, with regarding to how you configured your scene. All right, before jumping to tips that I think that would be helpful for you, let's talk about one more thing. I mentioned there will be a package cache holder has been created in the first time and it takes sometimes hours. I, I remember four hours have been taken by first time of those shader variant compilation. The reason is it does the compilation regarding to all the possibilities, all the combinations, such as, as I mentioned, it will do directional light plus fog, directional light without fog, directional light plus point light without fog, directional light plus point light plus fog. They will do all those comp combinations and it is huge. It will do, for example, you have a GPU instancing disabled and you're gonna have, for example, 33 variants. And if you enable the GPU instancing, it will double it. Despite the fact that GPU instancing is very good, if it is not necessary for you, if you don't have a lot of objects, you might wanna disable it. So we're gonna talk about those optimizations in a sec. But first, we need to take a look at the process, the operation under the hood in the Unity. Let's take a look at the document and see how it works. First of all, we parse all the shaders that we have and it will do a pro processing for variant creation. After that, it determines the compilation parameters and automatically strips the unnecessary shader variants. It will schedule compiling of all those necessary variants in all the CPUs that we have. What that means is if you have more CPU cores on your computer, it will compile much faster. But that's not all. Let's say you pass the first phase and get a build after four hours or something. It's not finished over there. If you even have a fast CPU, you need to have a fast 
hard disk or an SSD. Otherwise, if you have a slow hard disk, well, hard disks are generally slow though, uh, it will need to read that cache in the next time that you get a build. And it will take long to read all those millions of shader variants. So it's gonna take long time as well, even if you had all those variants are cached. So the easiest solution that occurs to me is get a better computer. You can consider it to be a subscriber if you like this. Wait, wait, I'm just joking, okay? But there should be cheaper ways than just getting a better computer. And even if you get a better computer, it will st still take long time. Because if you upload your project to cloud build in server farms with most powerful computers, it takes long time, like 40 minutes or something, which is not good. Um, so there should be other optimizations to do. And there is. First of all, let's start with tip number one. Check your graphics API settings and reduce the unnecessary graphics APIs. For example, when we look at Android, it, it includes two graphics APIs by default, Woken and OpenGL S3. So you don't need two of them because if you have multiple graphics API included to your project, the shader variance has to be compiled for both of those. What that means is, let's imagine that you have a thousand uh, shader variants, which is very optimistic. If you enable two graphics APIs, you need to compile for both of those separately, which means you have to compile 2000 shader variants. So reduce the graphics API count in the player settings. The older graphics API is checked. Please uncheck it to be able to see which graphics APIs are included by default. It applies for Android, it applies for iOS, especially for mobile platforms. In the desktop, you have most likely the DirectX 11, and it's fine. Tip number two, if you have unnecessary features, just close them out. What I mean by that is, in the directional light, you have an object, let's say, uh, there is a cast shadows thing, and in the object you have receive shadows option. So if you don't need to receive shadows and cast shadows all around, just disable it. Even if you need, just fake it with projectors and stuff. Because this way, unused shader variants will be considered, you know, those things will be considered as unused shader variants and will be discarded, stripped down, and they will be not compiled again. Also, it applies for other features such as GPU instancing. If you don't need it, just close it. If you don't need fog, just close it. If you don't need legacy shaders, just don't use them. If you don't need anything unnecessary, try to remove them as much as possible, okay? If you do that, you will reduce the amount of variants that will be compiled because they will not be necessary. As I said about the fog, it comes default enabled. You need to disable it if you don't need it anywhere in your scenes, any of your scenes. This way, Unity will discard it and not compile it. Tip number three, do a little dirty work. I know it sounds doesn't good, but it is necessary for reducing it and it is good for increasing the performance of your build as well. So I'm gonna tell you one more step in the next tip and it will increase the performance in your build as well. But let's talk about what we can do by doing dirty work. What I mean is, when you have a shader, it can be default shader as well, you need to go to the shader source. If you look up to the source of the shader from the inspector, you can go to compile code, and in there, there's a little arrow, and if you press it, you're gonna see how many variants gonna be compiled for that specific platform using that features in your project. So you can try to reduce as much as features and as much as variance with looking at those count. So just keep an eye on it and reduce the amount of the shaders that you have to be able to reduce the variance as well. Tip number four, in the code, you're gonna see a couple preprocessors if you're writing your shader. For example, there are a couple um, keywords like multi-compiled 
X, like multi-compile FOG or multi-compile OpenGL or multi-compile something. That means multi-compile keyword will compile and include those variants regardless of your configuration. Try to reduce the amount of it as much as you can. Otherwise, regardless of what you do, those will be included. So if you have existing shaders, you can try to remove those uh, multi-compile items, not for every case because you can break something, but you know, you can remove some of them if you don't use them in project. Also, there's another shader keyword, which is shader features. What that means is this keyword can replace the multi-compile as well, if you want to, um, because it will remove that shader specification if you don't use it. Um, this way, if you have a feature, but you don't need it, Unity will strip it down. But for multi-compile, it will compile and put it into your build and compile the variants as well regardless. So just try to replace it or remove the multi-compile pragma. Bonus tip. So let's say you have done all the optimizations, dirty work and stuff, um, and you get a build. What happens is by default, Unity will not put all the shader variants that you have into RAM. So you might notice that if you have instantiated something in the middle of your game, you feel a little bit of frame rate drop, sometimes big frame rate drop, depending on your material and your geometry. It happens because, yeah, you put some stuff into memory, you do stuff, and it's, you know, mono behaviors, yes, that's correct. But it also happens because those shaders are not put into RAM in the first time. So if you want to reduce that, if you're spawning something in the middle of your game, you might want to include those shaders into the build in a way which will be loaded before your game starts. And you can do that using shader variant collections. It is easy to create though, you just go to create and shader and over there you're gonna see shader variant collection and using shader variant collection you can add default shaders and those will be included and put to the memory in the beginning of your game this way once you spawn something that has a material and a shader that you have defined as shader collection it will not have that amount of hiccup because it will be already in memory it doesn't have to be read from disk in the beginning at the first time. There will be no warm-up in terms of shaders. But just be careful if you include a lot of shader variants into the shader variant collection because all of it will be dumped into the memory either you will have a low performance or even if you're playing your game in a powerful machine it will drain the battery much faster which is not what we want because it will drop the you know, playing rate and players will be grumpy. So just keep that in mind as well as an additional tip. Right, that's all I have about the shader variants. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. I will help you to solve that uh, weird build time issues, okay? Because I'm suffering from them as well. Besides from that, if you like this video, please place the like button. And to if you wanna help me, you can share this video with other people. That would be very helpful. You can't believe how helpful it will be. And you can consider to be a subscriber if you like this video and you wanna see more shader stuff. So that's all for today. Let's see you in the next time.